Okay. Um, I need to acknowledge a friend of mine who suggested this title to me. Because when I was first asked to give a presentation, I don't know what I was going to speak about. But I hope by the end of the presentation, you'll understand why I chose this title. And my friend is Joya. So Joya, whenever you see this, this is because of you. OK. So let's break it down. What do I mean by renewable education? Look at the word renew means refresh, change, or transform. And if you look at the word educate, think about enlighten, inform, or teach. Who are we trying to target when we talk about renewable education? All of us, all levels of society. Early childhood care, meaning we're looking at children less than six years of age. We're looking at children, we're looking at teenagers, young adults, older adults, and the elderly. Why? Because all of us make up society. And all of us need to be concerned about what's happening around us. How are we going to do this? Well, we use different forms of media which target different levels of society. Because most of us here use the internet. Even children are using the internet today. But we also have newspapers, we have the radio, we have television, we have what is called formal education, where you learn stuff within a school, a university, or a tertiary institute. You have what is called non-formal education, for example, if you're looking at the non-governmental organizations or churches. And then, of course, we have word of mouth. And I want to encourage each of you here, by the time you leave this afternoon, just spread the word. Whatever impressed you most, whatever stuck in your mind, just share it with someone else. Now, why should we be interested in renewable education? And the main um, example I'll be using here is climate change. Now, I have two question marks in that title. Climate change, question mark, is man responsible. And the reason I have that is because there are those who believe that climate change exists, whatever interpretation they have of it. And then there are those who believe that climate change does not exist. And those are who you call deniers. And I have a book here. If anybody wants to take a look at it um, at the end, it's called The Deniers, the world-renowned scientists who stood up against global warming, hysteria, political persecution, and fraud. It's a very interesting book. And those of you who have a love or an appreciation of math might appreciate a book like this. I'll mention that later on. Now, regardless of what you call it, whether you believe that climate change exists or not, I'm sure you would appreciate the fact that we are seeing extreme changes in weather, at least over the five, just look back five, ten years, just in Trinidad alone or in the Caribbean. Look at the severity of the hurricanes and cyclones on the Pacific side that we have seen just in the last five years alone. We've seen an increase in coastal erosion, increase in sea and ocean temperature leading to destruction of coral and other life, and most recently, severe destruction of crops, trees, buildings, and loss of human life and animals. And what am I talking about most recently? Hurricane Sandy. This is a picture taken in Haiti. The US was not the only place that was severely affected by Hurricane Sandy, right here in our own backyard. We have also in Cuba, this was a building, but the strength of that hurricane, it just tore through the building. This is a scene I'm sure many Americans have never seen in the US, especially in the east part, where subways were actually flooded. I mean, that is something that they have never seen before. This is why we need to take climate change, or whatever you want to call it, you need to take it seriously, because it's affecting all of us. I want to mention a quote on the 9th of November by the UN General Secretary Ban Ki-moon. Extreme weather sparked by climate change is the new normal. And Superstorm Sandy that ravaged the US Northeast is a lesson that the world must pursue more environmentally friendly policies. Okay? There are two points I want to mention here. 
he talks about the new normal, which implies that what used to be normal is no longer normal. So clearly something has changed, and it has not changed for the positive. And the second point I want to mention, he talks about it's a lesson that the world must pursue more environmentally friendly policies. Why the world? Because all of us are interconnected. What happens in the US affects us here. What happens in the Pacific affects people around the world and vice versa. We're all connected, so we all have to be concerned about what's happening out there. So what can we do? Change in lifestyles. And I want to mention a couple of things, but let's start with the first where Trinidad has been blessed with natural resources of oil and natural gas. Okay? Put Trinidad aside. The rest of the Caribbean and the majority of the islands in the Pacific pay almost 10 times the cost of electricity that the US pays or the cost of electricity that we pay. And as a result of that, since so much money is targeted just for paying for energy, other sectors in the society get neglected, education and healthcare. So one thing that can be considered is change from energy derived from what are called fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas, to forms of renewable energy, solar, wind, hydro, geothermal. And there are actually efforts currently in the Caribbean, in the Pacific, and in Europe, other parts of the world, where they're actually looking at moving towards more renewable energy as opposed to fossil fuel energy. Be aware of your environment. Not only what happens in Trinidad. Look at what happens in the region. Look at what's happening internationally, because it affects all of us in some form or fashion. Let me give you a very um, good example. I found this a couple of weeks ago, I think. It's an island nation called Toklau, I think that's how it's pronounced. And it's the first country in the world to become entirely solar powered. Check it online. The whole island is operating using energy from the sun. So basically, they have um, removed the dependence on fossil fuels and they're using what is natural energy, solar energy. That is something we can aim towards because the theme of this is dream big, then do it. This is something that took a lot of time, and it took effort from several organizations and people to get to this point. This is something other islands can be working towards. OK, for those of you who are students here, or who may have children who are students and they're not sure what areas you want to get into, there's a lack of capacity not only in Trinidad, but in the region in certain areas. And these are just some I can mention to you. We need people working in environmental law, policy or both, environmental education, education for sustainability, environmental engineering or environmental science or both, renewable energy, renewable energy engineering. Why am I suggesting this? Because the title of my presentation had something about renewable education. If you think back, let's say more than 20 years, at UWE, the traditional fields of study at UWE, engineering, law, medicine. Those are still traditional fields here at UB. So let me just make a suggestion. If you want to go into law, think about environmental law. We have less than five environmental lawyers in this country. If you want to think about engineering, think about environmental engineering or environmental engineering and science, which is something I studied. It's a fascinating field. If you want to do medicine, think about public health, think about environmental health. So shift from the traditional fields of study to something which there is a need for, not only here, but in the region. And one that I forgot is biostatistics, something else which I've also studied. And for those of you who love numbers, what is the, what are, one of the main benefits of biostatistics, or the other word that is used for it is biometry, which is the word I knew it when I studied it in the 80s. Basically, it's the application of statistics to the biological sciences. Why do we need it? Again, think back to climate change. One of the sites I want to suggest that you take a look at is the IPCC site, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. A lot of the data that they collect or that they use to forecast trends, you need to have an understanding or an appreciation of what kind of data you're going to collect, how you're going to collect it, 
who is going to collect it, how you're going to analyze it. That is a science. And that is why biostatistics comes in. Again, there are a handful of us in, in the region. Consider it, please. Okay. What else can we do? All of us. What can we do? Apart from educating yourself, you can change your actions. Simple things you can do. When you go to the grocery, use cloth bags instead of plastic. Initially, you're going to forget, eh? because I remember when I first started, you have the bags in the car, and you go outside, or you forget it in the car. And then you, when you reach back to the car, and you see them, you say, oh, gosh, I forgot. But now it's a habit for me. And they know me in the grocery. Don't give me plastic. Please use my bags. Why? Because where does the plastic end up? In the rivers, in the streams, in the oceans, in the drains. What are we seeing? Excessive flooding. Why? This is one of the reasons, not the only reason. Recycle glass and paper. It is very easy to recycle paper. Instead of shredding or throwing this away in the trash, collect it in a bag. Or for those of you who are at some institutes like UTT, they recycle. Because I used to recycle at home. I have a small shredder. Take it to UTT, and they pick it up, and they take it to the disposal site. Glass, you still have people here who are recycling glass. Plastic is a different problem, because most of the plastics out there do not degrade. They stay there for hundreds of years, literally, some of them. But the good news is, there are plastics that are biodegradable. And I saw one this year at a conference in the Virgin Islands, and I was very interested to see what was the makeup of this um, plastic. Three R's. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Reduce how much water you use. Reduce how much stuff you throw away. Where does all of this end up? Okay? So think about the three R's. Compost heaps. Very easy to make. When you finish eating your fruits and your vegetables, don't throw it in the trash. Put it in a little heap. Just go online. How do you make a compost heap? When you do that, it degrades naturally. And then you have natural fertilizer for your plants or your trees. So you're helping the environment. Um, OK, when you're brushing your teeth or taking a shower, I know most of us, either we do it or we used to, take off the tap when you're brushing your teeth. When you're soaping up yourself in the shower, just take off the water. You're saving water. Somebody else could get to use it. Um, we also I have mentioned the solar energy. One of the other things I want to mention is don't be in such a hurry to buy the latest cell phone or the latest Kindle. You know why? Because those screens contain heavy metals. And not only in the cell phone, the laptop, the computers, the TVs. I've actually seen somebody dumping a fridge, which also has some of these chemicals, but it's a different type of chemical, into a, a, a stream in Arima some years ago, and I couldn't believe it, actually dumping the fridge. We have no legislation right now for what is called electronic waste. It is very dangerous, OK? So think twice. If your cell phone working, you're good to go, right? All right. Um, last but not least, to summarize, <clears throat> I use the term renewable education because, as I mentioned to Rio, don't be afraid of change, OK? Change is a natural progression in what happens to us as we get older. And what was relevant five years ago, ten years ago, may not be relevant today. That's why you have to keep renewing what you learn. And how we learn is not only in a school or in a university. Every day we learn something. Just talking to somebody on the street, you go in the grocery and you talk to somebody. You learn something every day. So what do we need to do? We need to become aware ourselves first. And then we promote awareness. You try to motivate other people, empower them, and act on what you have learned. Okay? Now, I wanted to end with that phrase, we must become the change we want to see, or we must become the change we seek. But I thought about something driving down here, and I want you to think about this. Each one of you in here, think of yourself as a caretaker of the earth. Okay? What do caretakers do? We look after things. So using that phrase, we must become the change we seek. Let me use the word seek. What do we seek to do? Or what should we be seeking to do? We should be seeking to become better caretakers of the earth in which we live. Thank you.